So I suggest we move towards the kind of live demonstration part of this. So the first stage really um, is to get into an R environment. So what I mean by that is there are different programs that can run R. So the, there is just base R, which has been installed on this computer, um, on, on your computers. I can't actually see it there. But if you go into, that's strange actually. So we, we may as well see both ways of doing it. It's going to be a bit of a struggle for me to see, but it will probably be on statistics. Can't really see what's going on. Departmental software. It's on the statistics. Is this which where is that, in, is that in, under departmental software? It is actually the departmental software, Robert. If you want to ask you, you can go to departmental software, environment, geography, yeah. uh, and then the bottom of the page, you've got ask you. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's statistics, sorry. Yeah, so this is this is what I would call base R, which is fine, but it's um, a much more kind of stripped down version. You can use this. Um, and this is kind of how R was, but R has become much more user friendly over time um, with the graphical user interface afforded by R Studio. So if you really like the command line and you want to kind of know exactly what you're doing, then you can use um, this kind of base R version. Um, but what I would recommend, which has really kind of helped me even as an intermediate to advanced R user, I get a lot of benefit out of R Studio. So to get R Studio, rather than clicking through all the things, just type in RS as the beginning, and then it should pick up R Studio. So that's that's the one that I would recommend using. Hopefully it works okay. If it fails, because it's only just been installed on these computers for this course actually. So if it fails, you can go back to using normal R. But click on our studio and you'll see a panel that looks a little bit like this. Um, so the way the panel works is that you have four boxes, really nice and useful. If you do any plots, the plots are going to appear here. Um, I haven't made any plots yet, but you get your plots in one place. You've even got an environment that tells you about all the objects that you've got in the top right. Um, and then this is actually R here, so you, you can't really see it there. but. I move this out. That's what an R command line looks like. So you can type in, you, let's create an object called X. So in the tutorial, you'll see there's a very basic example where you create a, a, an object called X. I'll just type in X and then the arrow is 1 to 10. And then let's say Y, let's assign Y as X squared, so it's calculated that for us, and then hopefully if I go plot x, y, you can see it's created a little plot. So this is where your image is going to be output to. Um, you can save the image under any format um, using the graphical drivers, I'm not going to go into much detail with that. You can save, the, and again, our, our studio makes it easier to save your images, so you can export this as an, either an image or as a PDF, um, which is useful for future reference. And there are also ways of saving your image um, from the R command line with commands such as gg save, or if you type in PDF, that creates a new uh, kind of driver and that will save it to a PDF. I'd recommend not worrying about that at the moment, just try and focus on getting the images up on the screen. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Has everyone got that, got the program up and running and kind of tried in a, a basic plot maybe? Okay. So don't worry about that too much because this is actually covered in the, this is actually covered in the, um, in the main document. 
What I'm going to move on to very quickly now is um, the, the course repository. So to actually access the data, um, what, you, what you can do is download it from a GitHub page. You can, if, you're on the, if you are on this already, you can just click on, I press control, and then op or open it in a new window. And this will create. That will show you. This is the this is the project repository. What's great about this is you have a updated zip file. So when you download the zip, you're going to download all of the data and all of the stuff that you need to carry out this tutorial. And the reason we've done it this way, rather than giving you a memory stick, is we can keep this up to date and ensure it's long term um, improvement. So basically, before you could just explain how you got to that. Uh, yeah. Page. So the simplest way to do it, if you haven't already got on the R on the R post document, is to type in www. It, yeah, I'm sorry, you can't see it very clearly here. I can. It's basically this URL: github.com. Yeah, really, uh, and then forward slash. Robin Lovelace, which is my name, with a capital R. And then if you just type that in, in fact, that should, you probably don't need to type in this last string. If you just type in that, so it's less typing, it's, it's the top repository here because it's the most recently, it's the repository that I've added to most recently. And I'm sorry I've got a photo of myself there, it's a bit annoying. Um, you just click on this one. So has everyone got to that stage? Okay, sorry. So yeah, as I say, github.com forward slash Robin Lovelace. And then you can just click on forward slash Robin Lovelace will do it actually. And then you should get a... Yeah, not quite so okay. Ah, uh, I think you missed out with B, I was just looking at it. Yeah, sure. You should have got to do a technical guy there. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, so we're after. Okay, if everyone's on this page, we're after the top one, creating maps in R which is the name of the repository we're using. I'll, I'll come back to you shortly, sorry. Um, and then click on this one. So, if, if anyone's got issues, just let us know and Alistair or Rachel will come around to help out. Oh, it worked. Oh, I've got that. Yeah. Okay, so once you're here, yeah, download zip, which is on uh, the left hand side, click on that, um, and then just open it. That'll take about a minute to download, so in the meantime, you can go back to our studio and start so playing around. We download the creative map. Yes, that's right, download the zip of the creative maps repository. And that's what's great about it, it's got all the data that you need to do, to do this repository. Uh, this. Yeah, yeah, just save it or open it up. So we're going to unzip it. So I don't know how much load this is going to put on the internet, but my one seems to be downloading fairly quickly. So once you've got it, so you'll get something like this. So we're going to need to extract it, um, depending on where it's saved to, you're going to have to decide where you want to extract it to. So I think, the, I think the default setting for that is actually quite good. So if you extract it in a default place, for me that's my username which is GORL. Um, I'm going to extract it into that one. Just remember the name of the thing, so this is dsd.ac.uk 
Star, Star 7. That's actually a bit of an annoying name, so I'm going to change it, I think. Um, go to computer. So just click on that. And by the way, if you if anyone's got pen pen drives, you could possibly you save it on a pen drive, but just to keep it simple. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can just put it on the desktop, I guess. Okay, so... Desktop, like John's suggestion, which is quite a good one, um, and that C uses GRL desktop. That's important because um, when we are in our studio, which is here, we can now navigate to this. So um, you're going to see uh, on here, click on files on this tab. So if everyone's back on our studio, you can see. You've got files, plots, packages, help. This is, by the way, really useful. So any command you can think of, so just type in plot, and it'll give you an idea of how it, how it works. So that's just another advantage of R Studio. But for that's for the time being, let's find our data. So when you're on files. You've got these three little buttons on the side. Can everyone see that? If you click on those three buttons, that will allow you to navigate to where you saved your data to. So in my case, I saved it in, in here. And then desktop, I think it was. So hopefully, I should see the folder in desktop. Time to find it because there's so many different drives going on. Once you found it, you can just open this Create Maps in our Master. Click OK, and don't worry if you're not at this stage because we can come around and help you individually if not. And then you'll end up with this series of files. Um, and the important one to focus on is this data file. So you click on that, and that's all the input data that we're going to be using. Um, so that's really handy. Um, and what you can do in R is set the working directory. So if you also to point out as well, so you can navigate around your files within R Studio. But once you've identified where your um, where your files are, you can see that we have actually saved all of the R all of the files that went into building this um, project inside our studio. So I don't really want you to be using this, but you've got introspatial.rmd is actually the master document that was used to build this thing. So open that up, for example, and then you can go session. And it's these little tips that can really help out with our studio. You can set, click on Set working directory after you've opened one of these files and then you can say to source file location and it will automatically type that in for you. So the last time, just to raise that up a bit, the last time that we did that, 
we asked people to type this in, which was a bit long-winded and caused confusion. Whereas now, you can just go session, set working directory to source file location. It makes life easier. So at that point, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Um,